Every month, I report on electric vehicle sales and deliveries in China. As soon as that data becomes available, usually within about 24 hours, I have my report up here for you guys. Now, why do I do this? Some of you are probably wondering, uh, you know, Viking, are you just you just love China? Why do you love China? It's crazy. It's crazy. Well, not really. I mean, I've lived there for a little while. I've been there a fair few times. Don't really love China all that much. It's you know, it's an, it's actually a pretty amazing country, but in general, it's not one of my favorite. My favorite countries, to set the record straight, Greece, France, and America, outside of my own country, which is pretty cool as well. Greece, France, and America. Now, yes, there are some amazing countries I haven't been to, haven't been to South America at all. We would love to go. So, yeah, as you can see, China's not in my four top favorite countries, but... It's really important because about 58% of the world's electric vehicle sales happen in China every single month this year. Every single month, 58%. So what does that mean? Well, it means that the vehicle sales in China reflect what's really going on in the world. It does. A huge fundamental shift is happening right now. Disruption at a global scale, which is actually almost unprecedented. We haven't ever seen the global automotive industry, which is one of the biggest industries in the world. In fact, it's actually the biggest when you think of all the supporting industries that have to go into it. We haven't seen it be disrupted like this in such a quick, fast, insanely fast way, in fact, ever. It's never happened this quickly. And that is why it's scary, but it's also very illustrative of what's going on globally in the electric vehicle market. So here are the delivery numbers for the month of August. Hello, my friends, and welcome to the channel. I'm the Electric Viking. Great to see you. Welcome back. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for supporting the channel. And let's dig right in. Number one for the month of August was Tesla with 77,000 deliveries. Now, yes, BYD could have produced more electric cars. It's very possible, but BYD don't usually, for some reason, even the CPCA, which is the Chinese Passenger Car Association, they don't usually report on BYD's deliveries for about four or five days after the month has ended. So I'll give you those numbers when those numbers come. They could have beaten Tesla, don't know. Tesla 77,000. My prediction for Tesla next month is very different to the what they actually did in August. I'll put a link in the description below to the video that I made about Tesla's 77,000 deliveries and why those numbers will dramatically change next month. So far, who is in second place? Well, Nita, who I reported make, in my view, the best value electric cars in the world. In fact, I've reported on this maybe four or five different times when I've reviewed different cars they sell. Looked at the batteries they have, the range they have for the size of car. Honestly, if they sold their cars, you know, in other countries around the world for the prices that they're selling them for in China, I think they could be the world's biggest selling vehicle manufacturer. Now, why do I say that? Well, because remember, there's 7 billion people on the planet and still... Of the approximately 70 million vehicles sold every year, I mean, that's not very many, right? The majority of them are going in Western countries. However, when people in these emerging emerging countries, like China, for example, when they start buying cars, well, that's many millions of people. Think about it, right? Where is the world's largest car market by a million miles? It's China. There's a big emerging class of people in that country who are coming out of what we might consider poverty and going to that point where they want maybe a first car. Are they going to buy an internal combustion engine version? Most of them probably won't. That's my take on it from what I'm seeing in the Chinese car market. Need to produce 16,000 vehicles. That's an increase from 14% in July. The incredible thing about Nita is when you're having all of this graph, right, it's provided to us by the excellent guys over at CNF Post. Thank you very much for this data, guys. You can see what is going on here with Nita? And it's absolutely spectacular. Look at this increase. I mean, 2,000 deliveries in February of last year. Then the next month, 3,200. Then 4,000. Then 4,500. Then 5,000. Then 6,000. Then 6,600. And so on. It's like every month, like clockwork, it's gone up, 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 up. Of course, yes, they did have a down month in April of this year at only 8,800. But then they hit 11,000. Then 13,000. Then 14. Then 16. And you know what? It looks very much like they're going to hit maybe 18 next month. What are they at next? The month after that, 20,000. 20,000 times 12, that's 240,000 electric vehicles delivered per year. I think good chance Nita will deliver 
more than 250,000 electric cars alone next month, next year. And the crazy thing is, no one has even heard of them. The only people that have heard of them are some of you guys who watch videos that I make about that car company. Third place was Leap Motor. Leap Motor have literally leaped over, <laughs> excuse the pun, X-Pun and Neo. And they delivered 12,500 vehicles in August, which was an increase of 4% from July. But it was a massive increase from the same period last year. In fact, it's 250% more cars than they delivered in the same month last year. 12,525 last year, same month they delivered 4,400. So they tripled their electric vehicle production in the space of 12 months. I just can't understand why these legacy automakers, you know, why Volkswagen? Why, to be honest, I mean, Toyota, Honda, Mazda, Mitsubishi, Suzuki, you know, Subaru. Why all these cars, Renault, you know, the list goes on. Some are worse than others, and to be honest, they're all not that great. Why are they struggling so much to produce electric cars? I can't, you know, I just don't quite understand it. But I do understand one thing after starting this YouTube channel just over a year ago, and that is that electric cars don't get built overnight. You see these graphs? None of them, none of them ever go from 5,000 per month to 100,000 per month in the space of, you know, two months. It does not happen. It doesn't happen. So for those of you watching the channel, and some of you are still out there who are predicting that Toyota are going to produce, you know, pull things out of their bottoms and, you know, produce miracles. And there are many people who still legitimately believe this. People still believe General Motors can go from producing, you know, 10,000 EVs a month to producing a million you know, a million every few months within the space of three years. They really think that. But there's just no historical precedence for this of happening. It has not happened. These graphs we're seeing here, this increase of, you know, 5% per month is actually a win. It's a really good result. And it's the best case scenario we've seen from any vehicle manufacturers on the face of the earth. BYD, their production is the absolute best gold standard when it comes to upping production numbers per month. But right? That is still nowhere near what companies like GM claim they're going to do when they ramp up. And that's why it's so unbelievable. I mean, look at these graphs. It's really good to see this. Why it's so unbelievable when people like Mary Barra make claims that are unbelievable? Because no one is doing what GM says that they will actually do. It's worth keeping that in mind. So when you're looking at these videos, when we're looking at this data, it's worth keeping in mind, can companies really increase their production of electric cars in the order of magnitude of, say, hundreds of thousands per year. They cannot. It hasn't happened yet. Let's get to the next examples. I want to show you why my point holds true. NEO are next with 10,677 deliveries. That's an increase of 6% from July, which is not too bad. The thing is, right, in September of last year, NEO delivered 10,600. So they're about on par with their September of last year. In other words, NEO's production has stalled. It hasn't really done much, hasn't really increased. In fact, very, very little increase from last year. Same thing goes for x -Punk, right? The problem is, it seems as though manufacturers, when they start to hit around 10,000 per month, they hit a bit of a bottleneck and things become very difficult. Ramping production becomes harder and harder and harder. I think Elon Musk would be the first person to tell you that. NEO's deliveries, Pretty good evidence of that, and it shows you why doing what BYD and Tesla have done is so incredible. The thing is, BYD and Tesla are still doing it in a very organic way. They're still only increasing by a matter of maybe 10% or a little bit less per month, month over month. They have some months where it goes down a little, some months where it jumps up. But it's nothing compared to these predictions from legacy automakers who are claiming they're going to be making millions of EVs within only a few years, which is a huge jump in production. Who was next? Huawei. Well, not really Huawei. Huawei backed Ato. They delivered 10,045 vehicles in August, which was a really good number when you consider the fact that this company only started delivering electric vehicles in March of this year. In March, they delivered 3,000. In April, 3,200. In May, 5,000. In June, 7,000. Then in July, 7,200. And in August, 10,000. Now, this is the quickest ramp of EVs that I've seen from any startup anywhere in the world. And I'm talking actual production, actual delivery numbers. I'm not talking fantastical um, pre-orders. I'm not talking fantastical, uh, you know, so-called, we will do this in the future if this happens perfectly. I'm talking, these are production. But we're looking at this. I mean, look, six months after starting production, they delivered 10,000 in a month. And it looks like a very organic growth. So this company is one to watch. Ato clearly 
are a very impressive electric vehicle company. And I'll be making some videos about them in the future for you guys who are interested. Make sure you tune in. Xpeng was next. Their deliveries were down 17% from July. Very disappointing to see. Really reports were, we believe from what Xpeng had said earlier this year, that they would deliver around 300,000 electric vehicles this year. They're not going to come anywhere close to that. That would be an absolute miracle at this stage. So I am quite disappointed to see they delivered 9,578 vehicles in August and quite surprised, in fact, as well. For example, in the month of June, they delivered 15,000. Then they went down in July to 11,000. Now they're down to 9,500. So it does appear that they're having some issues with production at Xpeng, or is it demand? I don't think it's demand. Their vehicles are priced extremely well for the product that they have. One thing to consider is, even though things are not looking so good for Xpeng over the past couple of months, the truth is they are still a very promising company and they plan on selling a range of models around the world in 25 different countries within the next 24 months. I think customers will become aware of just how good the value is of their cars. I'll put a link in the description below to my video where I talked about why the Xpeng P5 is much, much better value than a Toyota Camry and why you'd have to be absolutely mental to buy a Camry instead of a p5 if you have the choice very soon a lot of people will have that choice who's next zika zika are owned by geely one of my favorite electric cars in the world i've been talking about now i'm sorry you're sick of hearing me talking about it is the 001 it's a little bit similar to in some ways a porsche take and cross turismo but bigger more practical just as fast and a lot cheaper. Zika delivered 7,166 vehicles in August. That's an increase of 43% from July, which is very promising. For those of you who don't know, Zika is Geely's premium electric vehicle brand, and they delivered a record 7,000 EVs. However, that's only for one single model. The only Zika model currently on sale is the Zika 001. I'll put a link in the description below to my video I made about that car. Check that out. You'll see why I love it so much. In fact, the interesting thing is, Zika is about to have the new CATL, LMFP battery. I know it's not called LMFP, it's called, I think, M3P. It's going to be using the lithium ion phosphate battery with the manganese cathode for a higher energy density, but also Zika are going to use the Kirin battery, which has around 240 watts per kilo of energy density. What does that mean? Well, CATL claim. These new Zika vehicles will be able to do a thousand kilometers of range, right? That's not a that's not a hybrid. It's not a plug-in electric. That's purely electric with a car this big. Frankly, give me a Zika 001 with a thousand kilometers of range with CATL's new structural Kirin battery. I'll be a very happy man. Now, our final entrant. Yes, there will be more sales reported from other car manufacturers over the next few weeks, but we're not going to hear from them for a little while. So we'll stick with this. In sixth place was Voyar with 2,430 vehicles in August. That's an increase of 35% from July. Voyar are the premium electric vehicle brand of Dongfeng Motor. Dongfeng Motor is a state-owned Chinese automobile company. Now, yes, of course, we haven't talked about the Wuling Hongwan Mini EV, which, yeah, they're going to sell a lot more than 2,400 of those in the month. More than likely, they'll sell somewhere close to the 37,000 that they delivered in July. So 37,000 puts them, as you can see, in second place to only Tesla. The Wuling Hongwan Mini EV is made by a tri-venture between Wuling, another company, SAOC, and General Motors. Now, the average sales price for those cars is around about 7,000 US dollars. They make 24 US dollars in profit, but they do make more profit than that because of the incentives that come from the Chinese government. That, my friends, is one of the most popular electric vehicles in the world. Another brand we don't see here on this list who will probably be in the top five is GAC. GAC sell the Aeon Y, which is one of the most popular electric cars in the world. The Aeon Y is an electric compact crossover, and it's Aeon's fourth model after the Aeon V, the Aeon S, and the Aeon LX. It's very similar in size to the BYD Addo 3, and it comes with an NEDC range of 600 kilometers. GAC delivered 12,500 of that model alone in July, making it the seventh most popular electric car in China for the month of July, and actually one of the top 20 best-selling EVs in the world in July as well. If you combine all of GAC's vehicle sales, electric vehicle sales 
in August, you're probably going to be looking at a close to around 20,000, making them possibly the fourth largest manufacturer of EVs in the month of August. Now, that's not confirmed yet, but that's just my prediction. Hope you've enjoyed the video and it's given you a good insight to the electric vehicle production going on in China. It's crazy, it's enormous, and it's at a scale that the rest of the world should be a little bit concerned about. It's exciting though to see these vehicle production numbers. What does it mean? Tesla's ramping up production BYD are ramping up production, and a lot of those cars are coming to the West. So you're going to have more and more choice very soon. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. Bye-bye.